Um, well, we, we knew what we were going to have tonight with, um, you know, an Ohio State team that was going to play um, with a back against the wall, you know, desperation type of attitude. I mean, obviously we feel their record is not indicative of, of what they have. And I mean, the first time that we played these guys on January 2nd, they just had their way with us, you know, and, and with physicality and toughness and, you know, just you know, it was probably our worst loss of the year in terms of someone just beating us down from start to finish. Um, so we knew we were what we were going to be up against. Um, really proud of our guys. Uh, I thought, you know, especially down the stretch there, the last eight minutes, um, we we hit some timely shots. Their late clock, Brooks Barnheiser was fantastic. Uh, he hit a couple huge threes for us, and then obviously uh, Chase hit a big three in the corner there to put us up seven. We didn't finish the game like I wanted to. Um, you know, had a couple careless turnovers, missed some free throws, but we got we got enough stops to be able to finish the day the, the deal and, and finish the game. And and obviously, anytime you can win on the road in the Big Ten, it's a big deal. And even if you win at home, it's a big deal. This is a league like no other. And um, I think someone told me this is only the second Northwestern team in 48 years uh, that has come in here and won. So obviously, it's been a difficult task. Uh, from Northwestern teams, and and really proud of my guys for coming in here and getting the job done. Chris, they, they had a lead 47-45 with about 10 minutes to go. You guys answered and then pulled away from, from that point. W what did you see from your team in those moments that allowed you on the road, like you said, a place you haven't had much success historically, to, to take the game from there? Um, you know, we've had some good results on the road. You know, we, we went into Breslin Center and, and won a big game at Michigan State. We won at Assembly Hall in Indiana. Um, you know, the, the two of the very toughest venues to play in where we had to win close games. And I think any time you can have success in those tight situations, you draw upon that. You know, and that's something that we struggled with in the last couple years. You know, I mean, it was well documented. You know, our ability to close close games was not very good. You know, I we talked about the toughness that it takes. We talked about it all off season that we're going to be in close games, and when you're in close games, you got to be at your very best at both ends. And I just I thought we executed well during that stretch. Thought we made the extra pass. We didn't panic and take tough rush shots. We we drew multiple defenders, found the open guy, and and even when we didn't hit, I thought we were getting some good looks. And then we were having a really hard time with suing. Obviously, he's a tough cover. He's so strong, especially when he can get downhill with those drives and he can shoot with both hands. And 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 he was drawing fouls and getting going. But you know, to be able to do the job on Bryce, you know, who to me is one of the top offensive players in this league. To hold him to one basket, you know, obviously was a difference in the game as well. So some of those things that you talk about there, the uh, being being able to withstand things and, and coming together and making all those tough plays to to close out a game down the stretch. How much of that is stuff that you can coach, and how much of that is just like innately guys understanding what it takes to close out games and win games? You know, I, I think you definitely talk about it, and you definitely work on those situations: press breaks, using clock, late game execution. You know, defense when you when you you know with a lead, how you got to defend. And we weren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's just a testament to our guys. You know, the things in the huddle, the talk was just so positive. Um, they were they were just very determined. Um, they had a look in their eye that, you know, they were going to get the job done, even though it wasn't maybe the prettiest out there. And so at the end of the day, you, you can talk through things and you can practice, but it doesn't simulate the game. And it, it takes guys that have courage and, and toughness and togetherness, especially in these road venues. You mentioned Brooks. Um, what allowed him to have, I think he set a career high in points, was was significantly better from three point range than he's been all season. What allowed him to to get off like he did tonight? Well, he he's just been playing better and better each game. You know, Brooks is someone that when we recruited him, we thought he could be this kind of guy. You know, he's an Indiana kid. His dad is a renowned high school coach in the state of Indiana. He scored. You know, he's one of the all time leading scorers in the state. You know, so he can put the ball in the basket. He came in last year with a broken foot. And it took him about half the season to kind of get back healthy. And then it was very hard for him to kind of crack into the rotation. And I give him a lot of credit because in today's day and age, maybe a lot of guys would have jumped ship on that. And he and I said, hey, man, you're, you're in the right spot. You're going to be great here. This is where you're supposed to be. You're healthy now. Let's have a great offseason. Let's come into next year and, and, and let's start being that guy. And, 
you know, for a lot of ten- intensive purposes, it's kind of his freshman year because he didn't play much last year. So for him to play in these venues, to play against these teams and, and start to have the kind of success because we need guys to take pressure off our guards. You know, Boo and Chase, there's a lot on their plate every night, you know, and, and they've been fantastic. But we need those guys around them to continue to get better and continue to alleviate some of the pressure because teams are trying to take those guys away. You've been around this game with a pedigree all coaches would envy with your dad and under Coach K. Can you scout a team and see a team that's confident and a team that's not? And I wonder what you see when you look scouting Ohio State the first time compared to scouting them this time. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously when you lose, we've been through it. I mean, I, I've I've been in, in Northwestern where we've lost eight, nine, ten games in a row, and it's a difficult thing in this league. And and really, there's no let up in this conference. You know, like you. Every when you're not playing well or you can't get the job done, then you got somebody else coming in three days. And and certainly when we played these guys in early January, you know the confidence, you know the the, the you know just how how hard they played, how tough they played. And I thought they played very hard tonight. But you know when when you go through losing streaks, it's not easy. Uh, I get it. Trust me, I, I've been there. And you want so badly as a coach to kind of get your guys over the hump. Um, and I knew that they were going to – I mean, there's a lot of character in that locker room. I, I, I love Chris Holtman and what I, I have always admired him as a coach, the way he carries himself, the way his teams play. And I knew coming into tonight this was going to be a tough game. And, you know, you know, fortunately we were able to get the win. But, you know, there's no doubt in my mind there, there's not a lot of teams in these last seven games that are going to want to play these guys because they're, they're young kid. I mean, Thornton's getting better. Obviously, you know what you have in Sensible and, and with Key and Suing, you know, those two older guys are guys that have been through a lot of wars and, and can really get the job done. What you mentioned, you want to get them over the hump when you're in the middle of a losing streak. They need to win mm. to believe they can. So how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, trust me, I, I've been there. Um, I understand what they're going through. Um, you know, we had, it. I think, in the COVID year, we won our first three and then lost 13 in a row, you know, and... and it's not easy for coaches. It's not easy for players to then come back the next day. Like when you never, like people don't understand. Maybe they do, but I think a lot of people don't understand the commitment that these players put into this. You know, the the nutrition aspect, the weight training, the the practices, the film study, the extra shooting and extra work with coaches, the travel, the the games, and when you're not rewarded with some joy. Um, it can be very hard, you know, and, and I know from experience. And you just got to draw on on what you got in that locker room, and you got to you got to keep fighting. I know when I've been, I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for myself. When I've been in those situations, I was always told as a kid, you got two choices: you can tap out or you can keep fighting. And you know, my feeling is these guys are. I saw tonight; they're they're going to keep fighting, and there's no question in my mind they're going to win some games down the stretch. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you.